Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, morning watchers. It is Friday, March the 19th, 2021. Welcome to the morning watch. It's Friday. We made it to Friday. It's on mornings like this that we are, we can hold on to the promises of God that when we are weak, he is made strong, right? That he is the wind beneath our wings because I am tired this morning. I have been, uh, it's been a busy week. Hey, Kim and Peggy, Terry, my sister, Glenna. So today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 22. So I've looked at kind of the next week and kind of where we're, kind of our progression. And so in order, I really would love to get Matthew done next week. But we got one chapter hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow morning at 9, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I'm going to do a bonus edition of the Morning Watch and to do Matthew chapter 23, which means we'll finish Matthew one week from today and then we'll get on to Mark. So uh, if you if you want to stick with us tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we're going to do a special Saturday edition of the Morning Watch where we're going to do Matthew chapter 23 so that we can get done with Matthew next week. Hey, Robin. Hey, Connie. There's my mom, Patty. All right, so today, <clears throat> let's pray, and then we will jump in. So today, in today's lesson, today's chapter, Jesus is deals with about four or five big ideas. He, he, he's still using parables. He's talking to them, uh, talking to folks about the parables. He's talking about taxes and our role as believers uh, in interacting with the government, the civil government. Um, he's also talking about the resurrection, his own resurrection, what's coming. Um, he's talking about um, the Messiah himself, the Messiah. It's it's just amazing. So let's let's jump in here and get rolling. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings, Lord. Thank you for the strength that you give us, and we don't feel like we have any left. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for your word. We pray, Lord. I, we know that you are in our midst today. You tell us you are, and so Lord, we just want to give it all to you. As imperfect as it's going to be. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So here we go. Matthew chapter 22. It says, Jesus also told them other parables. He said, The king can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Okay. King, God, his son, Jesus, right? When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants out to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared. The bulls and fattened cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But the guests ignored them and went their own way, one to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. He's talking primarily here to um, his own Jewish people because he came first to them. And what it, we learned from yesterday the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone, right? His own people rejected Jesus. So that's what that's who he's talking about here. The king was furious and he sent his out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go to the street corners and invite everyone. That's how you and I got to the party. Okay? So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him in the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, listen to this, but few are chosen. Okay, so there are people in the midst who may look like wedding guests, but they are, they are not. They are not going to be, they're not going to see the kingdom of God. Then the Pharisees meet together, met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. So we see here that they're moving closer and closer to uh, trying their hardest to trump up some case against Jesus where he could be arrested. They sent some of their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to meet with him. Teacher, they said, 
We know how honest you are. You teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and don't play favorites. That was a bit disingenuous, okay? They're not, they don't really mean that. Now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives. How does Jesus know their evil motives? Jesus knows our thoughts. Jesus knows what we're thinking, okay? He does that over and over again. You hypocrites, he said. Why are you trying to trap me? Here, show me the coin used for the tax. When they handed him a Roman coin, he asked, Whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. His reply amazed them, and they went away. What does that mean? Well, it means that you and I, as believers, we live, we are not of this world, but we are in this world. But Jesus is telling us here, while we are in this world, then we need to submit to civil government. Um, doesn't mean that we don't make our opinions known. It doesn't mean that we do not push back. We feel like things are uh, are not right for our faith and for our families and that kind of thing. It doesn't mean that. But it means that we need to understand that civil government is put in over us in order to give order. Okay? And so Jesus says, give to Caesar what's his and give to God what is his. Verse 23, that same day Jesus was approached by some Sadducees, religious leaders who say there is no resurrection from the dead. So the Sadducees didn't believe that resurrection was even a thing. They posed this question, Teacher, Moses said if a man dies without children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Okay? Well, suppose there are seven brothers. The oldest one married and didn't die without children, so his brother married the widow. But the second brother also died, and the third brother married her. This continued with all seven of them. Last of all, the woman died. So tell us, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? For all seven were married to her. So they, this, this is a riddle. This, this, is not, this is exactly what it looks like it is. It's just them trying to trip Jesus up. And so they're like, there's a woman. She's married to a man. And he has six brothers, have seven brothers. And he dies. And then she remarries the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. What happens when she gets to heaven? Who's her Who's her husband? All of them? None of them? The first one? All trickery. This, all this is is trickery. So what, what, what they're trying to do, they don't understand. Jesus is saying, he's, he's getting ready to tell them, your ideas about what heaven will be like isn't the same. So let's look and see what he says. Jesus said, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures. Now, he said that to us about three times over the last week. And you don't know the power of God. For when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like angels in heaven. Not They won't be angels, but in this way, they will be like angels. Okay? People who believe in Jesus, people who are saved people, redeemed people, we do not become angels when we die. Okay? That is a myth. That is a uh, thing that we fly around all the time, but we are redeemed people that is higher, that is better, that is more of an honor than any. Be, the angels will never be able to say that they are redeemed. Only followers of Jesus that have been brought from death to life. So Jesus said, you don't, you, you, you don't get it. It's not going to be like that in heaven. You have, a, you have a, a warped understanding of what it is. But now, as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever read about this in the scriptures? Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had died, God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. When the crowds heard him, they were astounded by his teaching. But when the, when the Pharisees heard that, he had silenced the Sadducees with this reply. They met together to question him again. One of them, an expert, listen to this. This is so good. Because in Jewish law, how did it start? With ten. Ten commandments. All designed to point us to the fact that we need a Savior. Because if you break one, the Bible says, you've broken all of them. If I have lust in my heart, I've already committed adultery. If I have hate in my heart, I've already committed murder. We, can't, we don't live up well to the standards of the Ten Commandments. Because we're flawed and broken and imperfect. Well, over the course of the next few hundred years, a thousand years, the Jewish people created hundreds of other little laws that wrapped around the Ten Commandments were at the core, but 600 plus little rules and rituals that if you didn't do those things, then you're not in proper alignment with God. So they had more commandments you shake a stick at. All right? And so they really, this is like, this is going to be the dagger that's going to get Jesus, they think. 
teacher, the Sadducees ask him, teacher, or Pharisees, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? The life, their law, the law was their life. And so seeing how Jesus answered this would be very telling. And this could be the thing that could get him. Okay, listen to what he said. Jesus replied. This is so good. I love it. I, I'm so glad this is happening on a Friday because I desperately need this word today. You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Okay? If you look at the first four commandments of the ten, they all deal with our relationship with God. Okay? we got to love God with every, every molecule in our body. Love Him with all of our heart. 100% complete and total love and dedication for God. But guess what? We're not perfect, right? So when we become saved, Jesus gives us, God gives us the ability to love real love. Real love does not exist apart from the love of God. All right? Verse 39. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So Jesus says it all boils down to these two. Love God with everything you have and love people just like you do yourself. Or even better. What does that mean? Boil it down. Love God. Love people. And a lot of people think that you loving people allows you to love God. I'm a firm believer and I think scripture teaches this, that our love for people, there's a reason why Jesus mentioned it second, okay? That, that vertical relationship with God, having a real relationship with the Father through his son Jesus, then allows us to have that horizontal relationship with other people. Our love for people is birthed out of our love for God. But you know what? Who loved first, the parent or the child? I got two baby girls, man. I love them. They're 25 and 22 or 23 now. And uh, parent loves first, right? That's what the Bible teaches us, that God showed his love for us first when he sent his son Jesus. Anyway, verse 41. Then surrounded by the Pharisees, Jesus asked them a question. He throws it back to them, puts them on their heels. Who do you think, of, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They replied, he's the son of David, which is true. It comes from David's line. Jesus responded, then why does David, speaking under the inspiration of the Spirit, call the Messiah my Lord? For David said, and he quotes David here in verse 44, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. Since David called the Messiah my Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? It's an interesting idea, right? David, we know that Jesus was born out of the line of David. But yet David, even hundreds and hundreds of years prior to the birth of Jesus, realized that the Messiah, the Son of Man, would be his Lord. Okay? No one could answer him, verse 46. No one could answer him. Because you can't. Jesus speaks with authority. Why does he speak with authority? How does he speak with authority? Because he is God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. I wouldn't have either. Jesus had that way. But I'm amazed with all the interrogation that he receives. I've just been, it's amazing how he kept his cool. He engaged them. He never ran away from them. Notice that, you know. The old fight or flight kicks in and we want to get out of there. We want to get to a safer place. Jesus never turns his head. He never relents. He keeps standing there in that space, listening, engaging, asking questions, answering questions primarily. It's a wonderful thing to see. 
So tomorrow morning at 9, we're going to do Matthew chapter 23, which will put us on track to finish Matthew by next Friday. Okay? That we can get into Mark the week after. Okay? I love you all. Let's see you all showed up since I started. All right. Kathy. Absolutely. We will definitely pray. There's Wilma, Rosemary, Lorraine, Terry, Connie. I love you all. 15 people in here this morning. I appreciate you all being here. We've been putting all the videos up on YouTube. I've got all the Matthew, Hebrews, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Maybe maybe more. I'm, I'm going to spend some time this weekend putting a bunch more videos up from our past videos. <clears throat> Seven months. That's a lot of videos. All right, let's pray, and then we'll uh, get, get our Friday started. Lord, I love you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for your truth and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for the way that you made for us. Lord, help us to carry this truth with us that we learned today all day long. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a wonderful, good Friday. And Kathy will be praying for your daughter. All right. Y'all have a good day.